At TCT this year, uh, I've been reporting the results of a, a histopathological analysis of 164 pigs who've undergone uh, renal artery sympathetic denervation using the Medtronic spiral catheter. So we can better understand the process of denervation, the effect on the renal sympathetic nerves that travel along uh, next to the renal artery, uh, and what happens at uh, a short time frame, so day seven, uh, and then we go out to day 180 to try and understand what the likelihood is uh, of uh, nerve regrowth in these uh, pigs. So the, the key findings are that uh, early on, perhaps not surprisingly, once we've delivered radiofrequency energy, uh, we see inflammation and necrosis within the cell. So renal sympathetic nerves are non-myelinated. They, their axons run within um, uh, Schwann cells, which are like the skeleton uh, outside of the uh, axonal structures that uh, nourish it and guide the, the growth and path of the axons through which the nerve traffic is actually delivered. And so early on, uh, we see uh, necrosis, we see inflammation, uh, and uh, this is what we would expect. So the question is, what comes next? Well, as time goes on, as we get to uh, day 28 and day 60, what we see is uh, fibrotic obliteration of the nerve structures. So the Schwann cells that run along the outside of the nerves uh, can stay uh, intact and, and survive, but the axons through which nerve traffic pass have been destroyed. Uh, and that area within the Schwann cells is filled in with fibrotic materials such that we cannot get axonal growth through that point of the ablation. What we saw also was very interesting in that the Schwann cells can start to attempt to regrow some tissue, but that tissue is chaotic. Uh, it's actually extra uh, cellular in the sense that instead of uh, trying to fill in the solidified structure inside the nerve, uh, it just grows chaotically around the nerve. And so it cannot form a bridge between the upstream nerve traffic and the downstream nerve for a couple of reasons. Firstly, uh, it, it doesn't have a skeleton uh, within which to grow. It's growing outside of that skeleton. And secondly, after an ablation, we get downstream nerve atrophy, uh, such that even in the unlikely event that the Schwann cells were able to grow axonal tissue that could reconnect upstream from downstream, the downstream nerve is damaged and the axons are, are non-functioning such that they can't be reactivated. So what we found is that we get a stable situation from uh, day 60 onwards of fibrotic infiltration of the nerve. Uh, we have chaotic growth around the nerve uh, produced by the Schwann cells that survive at that point. And we have downstream axonal atrophy such that the nerve can't reconduct traffic even in the unlikely event that it was reconnected. And so we've therefore got quite a high degree of confidence that uh, by performing RF uh, ablation on a nerve, we will not only ablate it in the short term, we'll also ablate it in the long term, and we will not get uh, functional nerve regrowth. So the significance of these findings are that we are likely to get a durable response to renal artery sympathetic denervation because we don't get nerve regrowth. So the next question is, do we have any evidence of that in humans? Well, we've just reported the results of the Global Simplicity Registry here at TCT from Marcus Schleck, and he reported three-year outcomes on 1,883 patients within the Global Simplicity Registry, the largest registry ever conducted of renal denervation in humans. And what it showed is that there was a durable reduction in human blood pressure out to three years with a reduction in office blood pressure of 24 millimeters of mercury uh, systolic and a reduction in 11 millimeters of mercury in ambulatory systolic blood pressure, which is always a little bit lower. And we don't see any signal at all of a loss of the effect of denervation. And so when you put together this animal work that we're reporting, suggesting that the lesions that we create are durable and that the axons can't regrow functionally, and then you look at a large cohort of real world patients, uh, we see a reduction in blood pressure from the real denervation procedure and persistence out to three years, uh, which has led to 56% uh, of patients in that registry no longer meeting the criteria of resistant hypertension, and 36% of patients in that very large registry uh, demonstrating a blood pressure less than 140 millimeters of mercury, which of course is our goal for treatment in many patients in many countries around the world. So I think these two uh, sets of data reported this year at TCT, they fit together nicely and they give us confidence in the procedure.
The renal denovation procedure has changed recently. Uh, we used to focus exclusively on the main renal artery to deliver our radio frequency energy. But more recently, our studies have shown that we can uh, achieve denovation delivering energy, not just in the main renal artery, but into the branches. And we also try and get the accessory renal arteries that are sometimes present. Well, there's been further work to help our understanding on this at TCT this year from Dr. Garcia Touchard, who's an anatomist from Spain. And he's confirmed uh, that uh, human renal anatomy is actually a little different than we used to think. Uh, what he's shown is that in 63% of kidneys, sometimes the nerves don't come close to the renal artery until they get really quite distal. Uh, so beyond the bifurcation and near to the kidney itself. So what this means is that our recent adaptations in technique to deliver energy down into the branches are more likely to get a complete denovation response and therefore hopefully a more consistent effective procedure. He's also shown that 30% of patients will have an accessory renal artery and therefore being able to get into these arteries and deliver denovation de to these highly innovated structures may also be important. So further support for the evolutions in the technique and hopefully for a better procedure.